Welcome to another video. I am sharing today some yarn that I got in the mail from Brooklyn Tweed and one of the goals that I've set for myself is to experiment with and try at least a couple of skeins of yarn from every yarn line that is out there that can be used for Fair Isle or stranded knitting and I've worked with Brooklyn Tweed yarn in the past. This is a new fingering weight yarn that they came out with a couple of years ago I believe and it's the Peary line and I looked at this uh, palette inside of a yarn store once and I, I thought, you know, maybe these colors aren't for me. And the reason why I am delving into this uh, yarn range is because the yarn is really, really soft. And I am sort of getting a little uh, frustrated with uh, scratchier wool because I live in a warmer climate and you don't really need heavy wools. and. I'm just finding that my skin is getting irritated from the wool that is the more rustic wool and this was really the only yarn line I could find that had the, this range of colors in a fingering weight yarn and so I thought I would just give you my first impressions of what I thought about this yarn um, I really was a very excited about this one color in particular it is called Ginger Snap and it's just really a nice uh, soft mellow rust color and so I looked online and it looked like there were uh, two other reddish browns and this one called hickory I think the camera can kind of help you see it does come across as a nice uh, mid-tone reddish brown but more brown than rust but still I thought these three could work together really well so I've got the muslin the uh, ginger snap and the hickory and right next to the hickory on the shade card is this color called loam loam and I thought it would be the deepest color in a range of three for reddish browns and there is barely any sense that this is reddish brown at all and when you hold them together they barely look different from one another and if anything this looks like a warm brown and this looks like a cool brown to me so this is where I started getting into trouble with this uh, this company in terms of trying to understand how these yarn colors were formulated in terms of how they were supposed to work together with their owl knitting and I'm not really seeing that there was a strategy there for color work knitting in the classical sense and what I mean by that is I would think that you would want at least three colors to do Shetland knitting so that you can have light, medium, and dark in one gradient in the background of a motif or in the foreground of a motif and I wasn't seeing that that was an option with this with this shade card so I'll give you uh, a, another look at the shade card so you can see while the colors in this range here are quite lovely there really isn't a combination in here where you could go from light, medium, and dark with one color. So here's the ginger snap, here's the hickory, and those are reddish browns. And then you've got the loam, which is a, maybe it's a neutral brown where it goes neither cool nor warm, just, it's, I would say medium brown. And then there's really no dark brown, it goes straight to black. So it's just, no matter how you work with the colors in every section of the shade card. There is, wasn't really a sense that they had formulated this line so that I could go from light to medium to dark within any one given color. So um, the, there's a lot of putty tones here. I want to call just call that putty tones. And I suppose these are um, tones that look like they have green undertones in them so you have some greens with some gray undertones there and I'm I'm guessing this is their green line because in order to get aqua you need some green so this is their full palette for green and while there is a sense of color harmony across this palette here it really doesn't follow along the similar classical lines of fair isle knitting where you get light medium and dark within one color so it just made me feel as though this would make it a lot more challenging to figure out how to work with this line. Um, this section here, you have these yellow tones, and when you think of Scandinavian knitting, 
This gold tone is quite common and popular, and if you think of all of these as gold, you get three different shades of gold. Um, it's very hard for me to get a sense for what colors were used in the dye to create the finished color, but my impression is this: this has green undertones, and this has orange undertones, and this has orange undertones. Um, so how these colors here relate to this line, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just they didn't have space to include these greens here with this section here. And then you've got your reds. And some of these reds I'm sort of familiar with um, that you might see from other knitwear lines. For example, the Isaker 2 line has a color very similar to this and this that I knit my Katie's cap with. So I feel like these three colors I've seen elsewhere, but don't really seem to relate to one another in terms of putting it into one palette for a classic Shetland knitting project. So if anything, I when after spending about an hour trying to study this, my impression was that perhaps if you're doing a Scandinavian project where maybe you're doing two colors with one accent color, so for example, I was seeing some knitting patterns and I was looking at some slippers and I was thinking, okay, it could be this gold plus this white for the two colors. So that white and that gold would be your two colors. And then for the trim, um, as the accent to the slippers, you could pick one other color. So I, don't, I didn't reach out to the network, the, the company and say, you know, how, what was the thinking and the strategy behind the development of your, your color palette? And I didn't, um, I haven't been a long time follower of this company. And so uh, I, I, I'm not really familiar with this, the color story behind the branding uh, behind this effort. But um, I, I feel when I look at these colors that to me they seem, while sort of reminiscent of some Scandinavian colors, it very much feels like a distinctively American color palette, uh, if anything. Although if you do see knitwear designs from Scandinavia, you do see that there are colors in here that you could uh, sort of pull out and use and uh, if you're trying to be inspired by color palettes from Scandinavian knitwear patterns. Uh, these colors seem like my favorite. I'm really liking these colors here. And these feel very American to me. All of these colors feel very American to me. Um, these colors here, I feel like the Scandinavian colors that uh, they captured the best are maybe in these gold tones here and then some of these red tones so it's it's very hard for me to understand some colors in particular how this peach pink relates to anything in the rest of the palette if you're doing color work um, I'm guessing there must be an enormous number of people that knit tons of projects where they're just using one shade for the entire project with this line. It doesn't seem like it was particularly formulated for color work at all, but it's one of those lines where you sort of have to see what you can do to work with it, and I can definitely see the possibility of doing yoke sweaters. There's a lot of different niche uh, yarn lines out there that have a range of 12, 15 colors, and a lot of people have sort of managed to find a way to work the colors into the yoke of a a yoke pullover. Um, and I think maybe that might be the best that might be possible with this yarn line. So in terms of the quality of the yarn itself, I've noticed a couple of things. And right away, I noticed that some of the skeins have yarn that gets a little thicker and then others go a little thinner. And one possible way to explain that is to kind of show you this yarn here has been sitting on my table for a while. And once it's kind of been allowed to breathe and it's no longer packed together inside these plastic bags that they get shipped in, I think the yarn is actually just starting to lose its twist. And so it you can see that the, uh, the yarn is not as tightly twisted uh, twisted here and the two, it's, I think it's a two-ply and the two strands are starting to separate. 
So you can see that's about how much uh, springiness is in the yarn. That's a big deal for me when I'm doing color work knitting. I need some springiness in my yarn. It helps a lot with tensioning the yarn to get a really nice finished results when you're knitting with two colors in each row. So I got this shipment from one company and then I got uh, this shipment from another company. So these came from Brooklyn Tweed and this came from Tolt, I believe. And so when I look at the this skein that I got um, from my original shipment, I thought, well, wow, someone had mentioned on Ravelry this is a heavy fingering weight yarn, and I thought, yeah, definitely I can see this is a heavy fingering weight yarn. But then when these, when this skein came in, it felt like the yarn was was skinnier, and this came in with that shipment, and this felt like it was thicker. So depending on the color, it very much seems like this yarn has some variability in the spinning uh, and the production process. I know that two different types of wool go into this yarn and it is produced over four different locations within the United States. A different location for where the wool comes from, where it's dyed, where it's cleaned, and where it's spun. And so it is truly an all-American story here and I think they've done a phenomenal job but and I do love how soft it is, but uh, it just really cannot replace uh, the Scandinavian uh, and British wools that we get to use uh, for color work knitting. So I, I was thinking maybe I would return some of these and for how much it costs to mail them back, I thought, well, I'll just keep them because I'm sure I can incorporate them into different projects over time. Um, I, I really, really had my heart set on trying to create a three color gradient with reddish browns and it doesn't look like it's possible with the shipment I got and it also doesn't look like it's going to be possible from all the different colors that I had to choose from from this palette. When I looked at the other browns, there was no other brown with reddish brown in it. So I thought in my case, in order to really pull it off as a three color gradient, I would have to go with the ginger snap, the hickory, and probably this kettle. So if I, I have the loam, it didn't really feel like there was enough separation of color between this and this, which is what I have. So I have these three now. So if I put my finger over this, I can see, okay, light, medium, dark, and maybe I could do that and just work with the black and kind of use it as if it were a dark, dark brown. It doesn't look super black, um, more like a Shetland black. It's it's not like a chart, it's not, it's more, it's hard to describe, but it seems like it could, it seems like it has some warmth to it. So I'm somewhat thinking of getting this skein and then using the rest, the reddish brown and then the black and possibly pairing that with this white color here um, or the uh, the uh, muslin. So I have the muslin. When you see it on this shade card, it looks like almost tan, but when you see it here, it looks more just off-white. And when you look at the two, you realize, wow, that is a different color than this itself, even though they're both labeled the same color. So just discovering that made me realize the colors shift over time as well. So what you see in the shade card may not be what you get with your skein of yarn. I mean, it is quite quite different in my mind. To me, this uh, muslin looks more like the hammock, which is the undyed yarn. And so I, I guess I'm very grateful that the muslin is showing up as more off-white than cream because I'm happier with that. Um, there isn't really a nice gradient of gray tones in this line. Compared to the wool folk tin, I'm not seeing it, but the closest that you could say that there is a gray uh, scale here in this collection would be these these colors here. So uh, it was 450 for the entire uh, shade card and I just think it's really a wise idea to get a shade card even though it's not going to be 
exactly what you get when you actually order the skeins. It gives you a better sense for what the colors really are. If you go to the Shetland, um, sorry, the Brooklyn Tweed website, I also highly recommend going there because at least when they show you the colors, sorry, my hands are shaking. Um, at least when they show you the colors on their website, they're in the same order as this palette. And so that the colors are grouped in the appropriate order in which they relate to one another. If you look at the colors uh, on some yarn site, it doesn't seem like there's any yarn uh, online store out there that puts them in their uh, online uh, web in their online shopping uh, system in a way where you can see how the colors relate to one another. It just seem to be randomly in these shop uh, uh, shopping uh, websites. So it was really, really hard. The only way I could even take a good educated guess was to go on the Brooklyn Tweed uh, website. So in terms of trying to solve my problem with the reddish brown, these, these were some options here that I was saying earlier with possibly incorporating the black. And then the final thing is there's one more color here that has a rust vibe to it and it, it's called patina and so I thought well maybe that would work so I took out one little piece here and I put it up against my two reddish browns and I was thinking that doesn't really work in my mind. It just seems like it's very very light and it shows up looking uh, too light in value compared to how deep these two colors are. So I didn't really feel like I could make much of this in terms of getting a actual final gradient. But then when I looked at my other brown that didn't really work out for me, I was thinking, oh, this could actually be pretty. So it just seems like if I wanted to keep using this yarn line, I could see the potential for pairing this brown with this rust. But the third color, I'm not quite sure what I would do because whenever I do color work, I'm always trying to work with one skein of white and then three shades of one color. So you can kind of see how pretty those look. It has a really nice, uh, I don't know, masculine sporty vibe to it. So this is loam and this is patina. And so it is a kind of a different rust. Um, so the, I think I showed in an earlier video uh, a couple of other colors that I got from my first shipment and this is always my problem. I'll I'll get a shipment and then it doesn't quite have the right shades and then I'll get another shipment and it still doesn't have quite the right shades and you keep getting drawn in and drawn in and drawn in and so anyways I I got these because I thought they would be really fun for Christmas. This is the Nori um, and this is the Palazzo, and the one thing I really, really liked about the Palazzo is it is a very uh, brownish red. And if you look at all of the colors in this line, um, to me this, this Palazzo is the nicest uh, red. So the uh, Palazzo is right here, and some people might call that a uh, wine red, but I just see a lot of brown in there and I'd prefer to go with a red that has nice brown undertones instead of reds that are it looks more of a like a natural color. These reds here look like very artificial colors definitely made with chemicals. You can't really see how these colors here could be reflective of colors from nature which is what you want to go for with Shetland knitting. So I think the Palazzo was my favorite red there. And then what else was I going to say? In terms of the green, I'm really excited that I got the Nori. Um, it just, it's a nice yellow green, which is what you're going to find in nature a lot. They also have this dark aqua green. Sorry, I'm really, the light is fading. So I guess I better wrap this up. So anyways, um, the one color that I really goofed on is this Mesa color and when I saw the website I saw the potential for it to possibly be a rust tone but there is just no way these two work together at all. This has got a lot of uh, rose. It's come, it, it's this, it's this color here you can see. So it's in their red pink family 
and I did think that these two could work together in a bigger project with other colors. So kind of looking at these three together, it kind of has a nice soft feminine, earthy, reddish brown, maybe Italian vibe to it here. And I was thinking of the Birk, I think it's called the Birkin sweater, um, where there's flowers in it. I could see how these colors kind of might show up in that with the, this color as the leaves. And I'm sure there are people out there that have already figured this out and done it already years ago. I'm just behind the times, really. But um, I was so in love with the wool folk tint, and I had used that for an entire winter. And I really, really, really loved how soft that yarn is. But one thing I'm noticing with the wool folk tint is that it has a very big, fuzzy halo of yarn once you've knit with it and uh, worn the garment that you've knit. And I don't think that will happen with this yarn. Although the wool folk tin is a lot softer. Um, so if you have wool sensitivities, I highly recommend the wool folk tin. But uh, you just, there's only so many colors you can choose from from that line as well. So I need to find another yarn line where it's fingering weight, it has a fuller range of colors, and that the yarn is soft. My hope was that I could find a yarn line that fulfills all of my dreams for what I need to do knitting where I live because it's pretty warm. And while this yarn line didn't really feel that it, that was going to be it for me, um, I wish I could say I love it. I'm going to get every color eventually over time. I'm going to really, really uh, be dedicated to this palette and this this yarn line. I just I don't see myself doing that. But I am going to uh, put these into yarn cakes and start swatching and knitting and seeing how it feels working with this yarn with uh, actual knitting and see what the knitted fabric looks like. See how it feels and works out with uh, two color knitting and then kind of try to figure out how I'm going to use all this yarn in a finished project. So I know I've said a lot but if you're sort of sitting on the fence and you're interested in this yarn and you haven't tried it yet and you're exploring yarn, I wanted to put this video out there because it does get quite expensive uh, buying yarn and trying new yarn and uh, I wanted to really spare people the uh, stress of not really knowing what you're getting yourself into if you're limited to shopping through online purchases and you don't actually have your own yarn store to get into and touch it and feel it and see it and really kind of figure out what it's all about and I know there's a lot of people blogging about yarns on behalf of the brand and those reviews aren't always objective I don't have any affiliation with this company I am just speaking from my own perspective so uh, I wanted to put this out there and if anybody has any questions on this yarn uh, please feel free to let me know and I hope to do a follow-up video at some point sharing uh, something that I finished uh, using the yarn and giving you maybe even more thoughts. So thank you so much for watching you guys and I hope you're really really enjoying a super fantastic pleasurable time for yourself. These are really difficult times and I know I've been struggling, I know a lot of people out there are struggling and I'm just hoping that we can all somehow find a way to connect and share and support one another and this is part of my uh, hope in, in contributing to that. So thanks so, so much again. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.